tattooing, man, I tell you what, there's no other canvas like it. You draw it on a piece of paper, you don't like it, you can throw it away. If you're doing a mural on a car, you don't like it, you can wet sand it off. This stuff is built to last forever, that's it. When I tattoo someone, I'm putting my 30 years of experience on them. My first old lady, my argument with my wife, you know, my kids' first steps. You know what I'm saying? Like, you really getting a piece of me. So if I'm in a bad spot, if I'm in a bad space, I'm fucked up, you get some of that energy put on you. You know what I'm saying? I think like most kids, man, most artists, I started drawing on paper and pencil. You know, I, I like pen and ink, um, but mainly it would be a lot of pencil sketching because I can get like an airbrush look out of doing uh, pencil, you know? And I, to this day, that's one of my, my favorite forms and probably the longest thing that I've been doing. I didn't want to go to art school and, and do a bunch of things that, that wasn't me. I wanted to draw the sick images I've seen on the street, you know, the dark shit, the party atmosphere, the drugs, the, the misery, the pain, the good times, the sex, the, you know, the, the car culture, you know what I'm saying? And so that's kind of why you, you see a lot of my work is done in black and gray. Because as a kid, I wanted my art to look hard, you know what I mean? Plus I was a kid, so I wanted to be older than I was. And that's why I would put Mr. in front of my name, you know? So my name was, my name's Cartoon, right? But as a kid, I always said Mr. Cartoon, you know? Or we would put doctor or some type of title in front. So we would like jump, jump ourselves up to adulthood, you know? Our graffiti resembles more of the old English. You know, it's hard. It's, uh, it's territorial. Um, where we loved East Coast graffiti, you know, like as kids, we, we wanted to be bombers. And as I got older though, I knew I had to make something that was my own, you know what I mean? So I would use the same techniques of using the spray paint and the caps and cutting and cleaning up with the spray paint, but I would draw a smile now cry later mask, you know what I mean? Or I would draw an old English piece, you know, with a with a crazy 3D on it. And I would kind of mix that New York technique of painting with LA icons, you know what I mean? So that's as a kid I was doing that. I didn't know that you know, it would turn into a career and I would, I would kind of uh, get known for that stuff. I just wanted to be known on the street for it, you know what I mean? I wanted, I wanted to get laid for God's sake, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I was a simple man, you know? Uh, it was no big master plan involved. The art is just kind of a skill that I've developed over these years, you know what I'm saying? Uh, my passion is, is working with youngsters and teaching kids how to draw. It's kind of my way to help these guys learn something that'll keep them interested and hopefully save their ass on the street, you know? I released some shoes with Nike and we did 45 engagements for kids. Nike was sending buses out to these youth authorities, uh, elementary schools, high schools, and junior high and pick up a busload of kids. You know what, man, I do that stuff because all this stuff is a mirage, man. All this stuff is a gift. All this stuff, it ain't even real, man. You know, the only thing that seems to be real is when I sit there and I, I help those kids out. That's something that you can't buy in the store. It's not bottled, it's not packaged. It's actually a one-on-one -on -one thing. It's like, look, this is how I did it. I practiced, I practiced some more, and I practiced after that. And then when I got done practicing, I started practicing on this other thing. I ain't no role model, you know, I'm just a grown man that, that does what he loves to do. You know, a role model is someone like Mother Teresa, someone that really lives that, that life of giving. I'm still a knucklehead from the street, you know what I'm saying? A lot of times it's just focused on how much shit I can accumulate in life, how many toys I got, you know, but what seems to balance that out is when I'm, when I'm working with the youngster. When I'm working with the kid, I ain't thinking about myself. I ain't thinking about how much shit I got. And I ain't thinking about all, all the stuff I need to get. But on the flip side of that shit, in the style of artwork that I draw, and where the way I look, and, and people I surround myself with, and the area I, I choose my company to be in, if I show up looking broke, punk rock with a ripped shirt and kind of like that, I'll be treated like that and I, and I won't get no, no dough. You know, I show up diamond down in a German car, 
they just have to give me money. You know what I'm saying? Because they look like, oh, this guy needs money. So it's like a double standard fucked up game that I'll be the martyr. You know, if I gotta suffer and do the plasma screens and the paper plated trucks and the European whips, diamond chains and all that, I'll suffer. I'll be the one to fucking carry the cross on that one, you know what I'm saying? But if I can help one kid by all that shallow fucking material bullshit, I did the right thing.